What's up everyone? I'm Earl, the Rookie Woodworker, and today I'm going to work on making an entryway organizer with a coat hanger. Um, and I'm going to do that out of this, this pile of pine here. And the cool thing about this pine is it looks like it has some of that blue staining from like a beetle kill. Um, so yeah, I'm really anxious to get this stuff melted down and see what it looks like and then slap some furniture together out of it. Let's get to it. All right, so now we got to make up a bunch of panels out of this stuff. So I'm going to chop it up uh, about an inch or two inches longer than what the panel is going to be required to be. The bottom of this thing is going to be a basically a cabinet, kind of like a kitchen cabinet, but not quite as tall. So uh, that's where we're going to start on first. So the wood that I'm using here is going to be a little bit too wide for my jointer, which makes a, a little bit of a problem because I can't get one side perfectly flat before running it through the planer. So what I have to do is create a sled uh, out of this melanine to uh, run these boards through the planer to get them flat before I go ahead and get the uh, proper thickness for them. So what I've done here is I cut out the melamine to be the same width as the uh, width that the planer is. And then I take a piece of scrap wood and go over to the bandsaw and start cutting out shims. And with that, I come over here and I put my piece down on top of the melamine and then every part of it that is hanging off the melamine, like every part of it that, that basically potato chips up from it, I shim it so that it's nice and tight. That way, whenever it runs through the planer, the planer don't smash it all down flat and then cut off the surface. And then when it exits the planer, it just potato chips back up. Uh, this way, it, it, it removes the planer's ability to flatten it out before it starts cutting it. And uh, we end up with one flat side here. And then whenever we go to, uh, to cut it to thickness, it will be perfectly flat and we won't have any curls to it. And when we do this, it's best to do it on a perfectly flat surface. And it might even be helpful to use a hot glue gun to make sure the, the shims stay in place because as we move this around, the uh, melamine might be a little bit flexible and some of them shims might move around a little bit. So a little bit of hot glue might help out in this situation. I didn't have it, so I just had to be extra careful what I was doing. And if everything goes well with this process, you should be able to lay them on top of each other on the bench and they should lay pretty flat to each other with minimal space between them at all. I mean, you might expect a millimeter or so uh, of a little bit of a curl to it. It's, it's not a perfect process. Uh, perfect process would be having a jointer that's big enough to do this. Um, but th this is about as good as it gets during this process. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time to take all this wood over and beat up the jointer because always joint your edges before gluing up panels. The thing about this is, is I'm just using a bench top jointer. It's not very big. Um, with the length of the bed, it's good for about two and a half, three feet. It, it's pretty easy to use up to that length. But some of these pieces stretched out to about four feet long. And that that's, that's pretty long for such a short bed jointer. So, uh, uh, it's not impossible to do, but it takes a lot of patience and a lot of, a lot of passes to get it perfectly straight. Uh, so I spent a lot of time over here doing this. Now some of these tool companies, they put extension arms on these tables and they help out a little bit. But the thing is, is, is when the piece slides past the very end of that arm, it just kind of drops off the arm. So it's only helping out a, a, for a little section of it. And it kind of makes your board a little bit wavy until you do finally get it down to being flat. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the same as having a table that goes all the way out there. Just because the arm reaches that far don't, don't mean you're going to get the, the effect of actually having a table that's out that long. 
I probably should move that fence back and forth so I'm not just beating up like three helical heads this whole time. Now, well, you know, next time I'll do that. All right, it's hard to show you this on camera because a little bit we're talking about. It's a little hard to capture on a, on a cell phone camera, so I'll try my best here. But I use my straight edge to see how straight this line is. And there's just a slight gap there. You see how, see how the center center of it just wobbles freely? That's because the middle of this whole area is not touching, but the two ends are touching. Um, yeah, that little bit of freedom to wobble is going to cause a little bit of a gap in our glue joint. So we got to keep on working at it. And this is what that glue joint would look like if we just glued it up as it is. I mean, it's not much of a gap, but there's definitely a clear gap that goes through there. And then that's where it touches. And that's where it touches. But the rest of the way, just a little bit of a gap that we got to work out. Let's get to it. Now that little bit of a gap can probably get squeezed out with some clamping pressure, but I might have problems with it if I do that because I will be introducing some stresses into the panel that otherwise wouldn't be there. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work those ends until it is finally completely flat the whole way across. That way my panels will stay straight and hopefully stay straight as the seasons change. Um, but if, if I try to clamp them things together, that extra tension, it, who knows what will happen to it whenever, whenever the seasons change and, and the wood starts to move and it might just crack apart on me in the future. So uh, yeah, let's try to do this right. Alright, so at this point I'm going to draw some lines across these joints and I'm going to use those lines to line up my biscuit joiner to uh, put some biscuits in these panels. With these pieces being as big as they are, these biscuits will make it a breeze to line everything up whenever we glue it all together. Now the only pieces we don't have to worry about this one will be the bottom of the, of the cabinet and the back of all three of the pieces. The rest of it is going to be made out of this rough cut pine. And just like that I'm ready to glue this thing up. So I'm going to put some glue down the whole seam and then put some biscuits in those slots and then line it up and make sure my, my pencil lines are all lined up perfectly too. It's a good idea to do all of your panel glue ups at once. That way you're waiting for everything to dry at the same time. Then when everything dries, you've got like an unlimited amount of work you can do for the next day. But the thing about this part is, is you really end up needing a lot of clamps to do this like this. So it's kind of tough. But for this build, my biggest panel is going to be the top of that cabinet, which is what I'm working on right now. And then I'm going to need to work on the side parts to that cabinet, which is the next thing you see here. Which side pieces was a lot more tabletop joiner friendly. So uh, these, these slap together pretty easy for me. Now this cabinet's going to get some shaker doors installed on the front of it, which is mostly going to be smaller pieces of this wood glued together. Um, into the style of a shaker door but that panel that goes in the door it's going to be a little bit wide so I need to glue up a wider panel for that that part which is what you see here and I had to do that twice and then we'll move on to gluing up the panels that will make up the uh, the boxing network that goes at the top of this whole thing um, the side walls for the uh, coat rack portion uh, I have some boards that are just wide enough that it's going to be perfect for that. That I won't have to glue up some panels for it. I'll just be able to use straight boards. So now that everything's all glued up, it's time to start trimming everything and start building our boxes. Starting out with the bottom, I'm going to use a three-quarter sheet of plywood since it is a non-visible surface. So we're going to go with plywood for this. 
Now it's important that when I cut these pieces that all of these corners are perfectly square. As perfectly square as possible. Because when you're working with such larger scale furniture, a little bit out of square can be like inches off on the other end of the piece. So we don't we don't want the slightest bit of out of square to happen. So we gotta make sure everything is perfect. Then when you're done, take out the tape measure, measure diagonally from corner to corner, and make sure that that measurement is identical on both sides. If it's off on one side from the other, then uh, you're not square and you have a problem. Then I ran everything through the drum sander to polish up the glue lines and any imperfections that came out of the planer. If you uh, don't have a, a uh, drum sander, a random orbit sander will work just fine. Just takes a little bit of time, but that'll work. Then I grabbed the bottom piece and I drilled pocket holes in the sides and the front of the bottom piece. And these pocket holes, I'm putting them in there about every six inches apart, not really measuring it out, just kind of, that's what I'm kind of shooting for. Um, and then whenever this is all put together, these pocket holes will be facing the floor, so nobody will be able to see them. It's a pretty good way to join this cabinet together uh, without anybody being able to notice how you did it. Then at this point, it's time to mount the side pieces to the bottom. Now you'll notice that I'm mounting the bottom about an inch up from the bottom of the side pieces. And that's because I wanted to give the bottom a little bit of room between the bottom and the floor. That way if something happens like some kid throws their snowy boots in the bottom of this cabinet, and then that snow melts, soaks into the wood, and causes a little bit of a warp, we don't have the bottom fighting the floor with that warp and cause an unstable situation for this piece of furniture. It's more of a just in case kind of thing, just in case some weird scenario like that happens. But yeah, a little bit of room in the bottom never hurts. And then it's time to mill, slice, dice, drill, and then screw together a face frame for this cabinet. Now all the screws for this is going to be on the inside of the face frame so they won't be visible to anybody. Then I had to go on the inside and drill some pocket holes on the inside to be able to attach the face frame to the sides. Um, these, you will be able to see them, but only after you open the cabinet doors. I'm not sure I know a better way to do this other than to trust glue to hold it or to use nails through the face frame. But uh, this is going to be a stain grade job, so nails will be pretty obvious, I think. So if you, if you know a better way to do this, let me know in the comments below. I would like to explore other options the next time. Being that the grain is in the same direction, I don't see why glue wouldn't work here, but I just have a funny feeling about using glue on a face frame, on a cabinet, um, especially when you got doors hanging off that face frame. I don't know. Let me know. Then I cut up and installed a little piece for support for the bottom. Uh, towards the back side of the bottom since the backing it's only going to be a quarter inch backing so it's not going to provide much support so I decided to add a piece of three quarter inch back there to help support it against the floor. Now speaking of this quarter inch back panel it's a good time to go ahead and route out a little lip for it to lay whenever I mount it to the back of this cabinet. Alright so now we'll start milling and slicing and dicing some some pieces to make some doors. I want to make some raised panel doors again so hopefully this time they turn out to be pretty. Let's go! There they are, the pieces, right before the hard part. I'm going to keep it somewhat simple with this and I'm going to use a tongue and groove setup to cut out these pieces. And Then the middle of it's going to still be a nice raised panel. Of course, cutting the groove in these pieces due to the grain direction is nice and easy. 
it don't get hard until you get to cutting the uh, the tongue section out of the ends. For that, I'm using painter's tape and a piece of scrap wood to uh, try to prevent tear out. I did end up with one little piece of tear out, but fortunately, the tape didn't let it go flying across the room or get it vacuumed up, and I was able to just do the old glue and tape it back down trick, and it was like it never happened. Now for the raised panel, it's easy to end up with a bunch of tear out or some burn marks in it if you're not careful. So I ended up doing this in a couple passes. The first pass it took out like 60-70% of it and then the last or the second pass it took took it to about 90%. And then the last pass it just needed to just barely get it to the right dimensions and uh, and go through it pretty fast that way it don't burn. And it, it turned out pretty good for me. I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that result. And it's all about having enough coordination to get this thing together. I don't know why, but I always struggle with this. I feel like I don't have enough hands to keep everything right and keep everything straight. And I clamp it down over here, then the other side gets slips out of alignment a little bit, or you know, it, it's kind of hard to get that panel to go in there perfectly. Um, yeah, yeah, I struggle with this a little bit, but I got it together. It looks good. Now it's time for me to get these doors mounted and make sure everything fits right. Fingers crossed, right? Alright, so it's time to set the bottom cabinet to the side and start working on the coat rack part, which is actually pretty simple. It's going to be two sides that go all the way up, and then it's going to have a quarter inch plywood backing, and it'll have a few support pieces in the middle. So this will be an easy part. And just like on that base cabinet, I'm going to use my sawdust thrower to cut out a groove for that quarter inch piece of plywood to set. Now there's going to be three supports that go between these two pieces. The top front one uh, is going to be about a two inch support. It's going to have some pocket hole screws that will go up into the the uh, storage boxes on top. And then uh, one in the back is going to be about five inches thick or five and a half inches thick and that's going to be important to come back to later because that's where our hangers are going to go and then there's going to be one on the bottom that's in the back it's going to be about four inches and that that all just kind of holds everything together and holds it aligned for this uh this coat rack portion of this piece so then i just set it on top of my base cabinet exactly where i wanted it and then i proceeded to trace some lines around it on the cabinet top now the way I'm going to mount this is I'm going to use some bolts coming in through the top of the uh, cabinet from the bottom and it's going to go up into some threaded inserts that are in the coat rack portion of this in the side parts of it. So at this point I'm carefully measuring out exactly where I want to drill these holes that way those measurements are easy to transfer over onto the coat rack portion. And after taking my time and measuring out nice and carefully, I put it on top there. And then I figured out that I can just stick a pencil through the holes and mark where they go anyway. So, yeah, that's what I ended up doing. And then from there, it's time to drill out and twist in some threaded inserts. These things are pretty neat. I kind of liked working with them. See, what they are is these, like, little, well, not little, but gigantic wood screws that are hollow in the middle and they in the middle has these threads that the bolt will thread into but the first like little bit of the bolt um, your allen key will fit in there so that you can turn it into the wood so you drill a hole out uh, big enough 
that the uh, shaft fits in and then these threads bite into the wood and screw into it and then your bolt goes through uh, whatever you're going to bolt to the piece that this is in and holds it all together that way. That way this bolt can be a little bit loose in a hole so that when the wood moves over time it uh, yeah, won't cause any problems. So yeah, it'll go a little bit like this, except whenever I do it later on, permanently it'll have some, some washers on it that'll take up some more space and give some more support there. All right, so now we'll put the coat rack to the side and start working on this top box. Now the top box is gonna be kind of an open concept, except for it is gonna have a plywood backing in the back of it, and it's going to, have the sides that are pocket hole drilled on and then it'll have two dividers in the middle of it that'll sit in some dado grooves. Now I did opt to use the uh, the miter saw to cut out these dados instead of the router. I think the router would have been more efficient because I wouldn't have had to go back and clean it up with uh, with a chisel afterwards but <clears throat> I was worried about the router having control issues and maybe even some tear out issues. So I ended up uh, opting with using the miter saw. The next table saw is going to be able to use a dado stack and I can't wait to get that thing because that's going to make life a lot easier on stuff like this. This took way longer than it should have. And then just like everything else we have to account for that quarter inch panel that's going to get mounted to the back of this thing. And now I'm ready to go inside to eat some lunch with the wife. Yeah. And then before putting it together, I sanded everything that's going to be on the inside of this box because it would suck to have to do all that sanding after it was put together and in nooks and crannies that was hard to reach. So yeah, now's a good time to do that. All right, so a little bit about the construction of this thing. The side panel is going to be mounted directly to the side with the top and bottom butted right up to the, the inside of the side panels. And the reason I went with that is because the slight overhang I'm going to have over the coat hanger portion, it's going to be pretty much in a great spot to mask the joint there so that it's a little bit undetectable. Now I am mounting the sides with pocket holes and you'll see that the bottom plate on top of it is going to have the pocket holes and it seems like that's going to be where people are going to be able to see it but this thing's actually going to be uh, a little over six feet in the air so you're going to have to be pretty tall to be able to see that so pretty much almost everybody's not going to be able to see it and then the pocket holes for the top is going to be right on top which is going to be pretty much almost against the ceiling. Now the center dividers I did use some glue to hold them in place but I ended up using some screws as well. The top I put uh, four screws in the top to hold it down to the center pieces and then I put two screws in the bottom and I lined the bottom screws up with where this thing's going to sit on top of one of the support pieces for the coat rack portion of this piece. And then it was time to sand, sand, and more sanding, and more sanding, and more sanding. I'd like at least six to seven hours of sanding in this thing. Ugh. So for the top of the cabinet, I actually decided to stain it because I wanted to break up the color a little bit. Uh, I thought keeping this the same color as everything else would have been a little bit overkill. So I decided to stain it. Uh, with this walnut stain and hindsight being 2020, I think I would have liked this better if I would have just made the top out of walnut itself. But I still like the way it ended up looking. And then it was time to spray. And spray I did a lot of poly on all of this. And now it's time for final assembly. So let's get to it. 
The top for this cabinet is all pocket hole screwed down. So I used an abundance of weight to hold it in place once I got it where I needed it. And then went through and just started screwing everything down. All right, so we're at the back of this, and you're probably wondering why I'm back here. And the reason is, I screwed up. Yeah, I definitely messed up. I got a little bit wild when I went to put it together. got excited, started hanging paneling, and I forgot that this piece of wood that goes back here that has the coat racks on it has pocket hole screws back here that go up into this. Now, there's pocket hole screws in the front board that's holding this thing down, but there's nothing in the back and it's a little bit unstable. So I'm not gonna pop this whole paneling off. I'm going to try to find those pocket holes and try to get at least two of them found and uh, yeah, go through the back and find them holes and chisel them out and yeah, I just created a ton of work for myself. What do you know, you would work and you learn, right? So I used a smaller drill bit, a little bit of taps and stuff, trying to find the pocket holes. And uh, once I found them, I got the uh, pocket hole drill bit and then used that to open it up for the pocket hole screws. Silly me decided to record myself talking to you guys with the radio playing in the background. So I can't use the audio to this uh, <clears throat> for YouTube because, you know, I don't own the, the uh, contents blaring on the radio. But what I'm trying to explain here is that this went better than what I thought, yada, yada, yada. And that it kind of worked out for the better because with that paneling there, um, you wouldn't have been able to get to their screws. Now you're able to get to their screws if you needed to take that top off for whatever reason you wanted to take it off. So it kind of worked out to the better because the way I had it planned, you'd have never been able to reach those screws to be able to take it off and it would have been there permanently. So happy ending, I guess. And how about we put some door handles on this thing? Yeah, let's do that. And with that, I am done with this build, and I am super stoked about how this turned out. It was a lot of fun. It was a big project for me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited with how that rough cut pine turned out. How it, when, when you milled it down, sanded it down, and finished it with some nice clear satin finish, it just looks great. But if you enjoyed this project and you want to see more builds like this, do me a favor and hit that like button and then hit the subscribe button and check out the other videos on my channel and stay tuned for more to come. But until next time, make something awesome.